This is a demonstration of the Nomadics Bandwidth Management product, which creates a multi-tiered bandwidth shaping algorithm that understands and controls application bandwidth and optionally individual user bandwidth. There are two steps to controlling bandwidth. First of all, create the groups for simple shaping of raw bandwidth across different classes of service. Next, we prioritize applications within these classes of service with their individual shaping policies. The first step in managing bandwidth across a bridge or an external interface is to define the limits and constraints you wish to control. This is set up here under bandwidth management. Simply choose the interface you wish to manage and the bandwidth available in each direction. Next, we divide this bandwidth into classes of service. I've assumed we're doing this for a hotel and divided them accordingly. You'll see we have services here for conference rooms, for a lobby service, for a premium paid for Wi-Fi and for a basic free Wi-Fi service. You'll see I've allocated bandwidth in each direction to each class and also given each one a type per user dynamic or guaranteed. It's worth taking a, a diversion at this point to explain what these types mean. The main concept is one of dynamic bandwidth allocation. Within any bandwidth pot, the available bandwidth can be allocated to either groups of users or individual users. We call this dynamic or per user. Each of these classes has a maximum bandwidth allocation. If the bandwidth is not oversubscribed, then the system runs sweetly. However, it is possible to oversubscribe all of these allocations. You can have more allocated bandwidth than would fit within the system bandwidth constraint. You can see here that per user is essentially a special case of dynamic. It's a dynamic class, but for a single IP address. We also have another special class of guaranteed service for a group of users. This is a pre-assigned amount that cannot be oversubscribed by any dynamic class. So what happens when more bandwidth is required? In this example, a big hit from both a group of users and a single user. We will act to balance the bandwidth in the area that has oversubscription for the duration of the oversubscription, but will not impact the guaranteed bandwidth at all. Bandwidth will be balanced equally in proportion to the configured maximum allocations for the affected classes of service. Once the oversubscription has stopped, we increase the bandwidth to the maximum permissible. So, returning to the configuration. Each bandwidth class is thus given a bandwidth cap and a type, dynamic per user or guaranteed. Reconfiguring is as simple as changing the type. As well as this, there is the option to allocate all the available bandwidth to a class. We call that use interface limits. So if we were to say change this one to interface limits and guaranteed, it would actually do a check and say you can't do that because you're trying to over allocate all your guaranteed bandwidth in the system. We already have some guaranteed available. Let's return that to 5.1.12. In practice, in most situations, most allocations would probably be dynamic or per user to allow oversubscription as you need them. So now we have our bandwidth classes. Which users do these affect? Going to the classes screen, you will see that each of the traffic classes is replicated here and given an IP address range that defines the devices that are affected by that class of service. For classes marked as dynamic or guaranteed, all the IP addresses within that range will share the bandwidth. For classes marked as per user, any individual IP address in that range is given the allowance. An example of this is in the configuration for premium or basic services within a hotel. 
this would represent paid for and free Wi-Fi access bandwidth constraints for individual users. Whereas in our example, we set lobby to be a dynamic class, which therefore is a free Wi-Fi access for all users in the lobby area of the hotel. So that explains basic traffic shaping. Now let's turn to the applications. Associated with each traffic class, there is a shaping policy. This defines the approach the class takes to specific applications. As an example, let's look at control video streaming. Each shaping policy has a set of application slices associated with it. Each slice is given a weighting and an optional bandwidth cap. The weighting is only used when there is a conflict for available resources. If only one application or one application slice is being used, sent or received, it gets all the bandwidth allocated to that class. As soon as there is more than one application, then bandwidth is shared according to the weightings. So in this case, we have services like Google Video, YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, RTMP and Shoutcast are given what we call low priority, one eleventh of the overall bandwidth. Of course, if nothing else was trying to use that connection at the time, it would get all of the available bandwidth allocated to the class. If any other application is being used, it would be shared on a 10 to 1 basis with these services. So you can see in this example, um, if people were using collaboration services, mail, web browsing, they would be given a 10 to 1 ratio over YouTube or anything else. We can also cap within this. An example of this is to look at slow video streaming, traffic shaping. This is very similar to the previous example. We use the same application classes. We use the same relative weighting. But in this case, we've chosen to cap the service at a certain bandwidth. What this means is that even though no other services might be sending, if there was all the bandwidth available, and in this case the video streaming service needed to use it, it would only be given 128 kilobits of whatever bandwidth was available. And in this example, that would probably make the video service all but unusable, or at least bandwidth shaped down to poor quality. We can add any application to this slice simply by editing the definitions. So if we were to look at this and add, for example, iTunes to that policy. Now, what we have is a shaping policy which has a cap of 128 kilobits but includes iTunes as well as these other services. Within any shaping policy, you can have up to 15 slices. That includes the default, which is always there, um, to allow for services that either haven't been specified or haven't been categorized. You can see an example here of how we can share, for example, a business application. In this case, we've divided it between collaboration, meetings, uh, email services, homeworking, VPN services, and everything else. In this example, we've given them different weightings, and we would expect the bandwidth to be shaped if everything was sending according to those weightings. In this case, uh, out of 55 would be the ratio. So to summarize, what we have is a system that primarily looks at the first level, at bandwidth, and divides raw bandwidth into different classes of service per user, guaranteed or dynamic. It then allocates users or IP ranges to each of these and a shaping policy. The shaping policy then determines exactly which type of applications are given priority or lesser priority in that particular bandwidth shaping policy.